Well, hey there, everyone. Welcome to beginner guitar video number 19. In this video, we're going to start on the pentatonic scale. Finally, uh, many of you have probably heard of this scale and wondered what it's, what it is exactly, or just curious about it. Cause you're in the blues or rock. So we're going to delve into it. Uh, pentatonic penta means five. It's derived from, well, position one is derived from the minor scale in this context. And what it is, is you omit some of the notes. And it sets you up for like near constant success. You're going to have the least amount of dissonance because you're taking out the unruly notes, essentially. <laughs> Uh, listen to blues music a lot and the, the notes just work really well or like ACDC jams, you know, it just There's not like you get into jazz. You can hear a lot of color notes a lot of weird stuff a lot of stuff that doesn't always sound the most beautiful and then it resolves and all this crazy stuff uh, The pentatonic's really not about that. It's it's more dressed for success kind of thing. So let's get into it uh, essentially you take your minor scale, the the root position minor scale, and you omit the second, and you omit the sixth, and then you get this. Okay, so we'll go through all six strings. We're doing A minor pentatonic or C major pentatonic. Now I'm going to say something about this real quick to always remember. So if your pointer finger is where you're starting, doing that shape, where your pointer finger is, is the minor root. So in this case, A minor pentatonic is that. Now you can play these same notes, but think of the root as where your pinky is. Same notes, but that's C major pentatonic. Okay, so if you're playing over a C major chord, it's gonna sound major, even though you're playing the exact same shape. Keep that in mind. Okay, now we're gonna cover position one. Position one at the fifth fret is gonna be five then eight on the low E string. And then on the next three strings, the A, D, and the G string, it's gonna be five, seven, five, seven, five, seven. And then on the B and the E string, it's gonna be five, eight again. Five, eight, five, eight. It's a pretty simple pattern. Okay. Now we're gonna move up to position two, but like we did with the major scale and all the modes, we're gonna talk about certain things to look for that always tend to happen a certain way or or reoccur. Now let's let's real quick look at something that happened in position one. We can see that we've got that gap. There's two empty frets between these two fingers. So that's the bigger shape. And then we've got the smaller shape that happens on the next three strings. Now they happen three in a row, and then you go back to the bigger shape again twice. Okay. Well, there's a couple of things that that's telling you. That's telling you that the most you're ever gonna see the smaller shape in a row is twice, or three times, sorry. The most you'll ever see it in a row is those three times, and then it'll go back to the bigger shape. Now, at the bottom of this, you can, or the top, I guess, bottom this way, but you know, top and notes, you can see that that 5 8 happening twice like that must mean that beneath that guy, underneath of it, if you were to go lower, say on a seven string or something, that's telling me that, okay, that big shape happens again underneath of it. Why? Because this is the high E string, this is the low E string. They're the same string, so if you had one more string to go down on, that's tuned in a fourth, you know, not like the funny ones down here. We'll get into that in a minute. Well, underneath you would have another big shape like that. 
Well, if here goes to the small one immediately, but here you've got two in a row, now we can see that, okay, the big shape is never gonna happen more than twice in a row. The little shape is never gonna happen more than three times in a row, okay? So let's, we got that out of the way. Now, let's go up to position two. Position two just means it starts from the second note and then you use all the same notes all over again. The second note where our pinky was where we're gonna start. Well, now we know that if you, you know, look at this shape, the notes that we used on that, you know, that side of that, we know that we've got all of these notes. So now we just gotta figure out what's off of them. And I'm gonna teach you that real quick right now. So your next notes are gonna be the eighth fret, 10th fret of the low E string, and then the seventh and the 10th of the A string, seventh, 10th of the D. So there's the two big ones in a row. What's that telling you? Small ones next. Seven and nine on the G. Now we're at the funny string, and we know we need three small guys in a row. Seven, nine, then you go up because it's the weird string. And now it's gonna be eight, 10, eight, 10 on the B and the high E. Okay, so now we know that these three notes, or these three shapes, the little guys that happened on position one are clearly happening right there again just an octave up from where they were originally in relation. There's three in a row, just like we predicted. The big shapes, two in a row, just like we predicted right there, okay? And then it goes to the little guy, and we need three in a row. Well, how did I know that we needed to go up a fret at the weird string? Well, a couple of reasons, one, is because we left off position one with our pinky at the eighth fret instead of the seventh. So I know that we have to start at the eighth fret for position two. Okay, that's one reason, but a whole other reason is if you go back to position one, and you've got the three little ones in a row, notice how if you were to just bar your pointer finger, that's a perfect fourth and then a perfect fourth. Well, what do we know about the funny string? A perfect fourth is no longer just a bar, it's up a fret from the last one, and that's where your perfect fourth is. Okay, now position two is a little weird. You may notice if you're watching this that I am um, using my fingers kind of in a strange way. So to start it, I'm going from my middle to my pinky. And then on the next string, it's pointer, pinky, pointer, pinky on the next. You may be wondering, well, why are you starting with your middle and your pinky and not your pointer? Uh, because if I go pointer ring, for example, which is normal for that small shape with just one fret in between, then I have to open it way up because on the next string I need to be down a fret from where I started on this string. So I just start with my middle finger so that I can use my pointer on the next one. Another option though is to use your pointer and your pinky on the low E string at position two. So that eighth fret to the tenth fret, if you use your pinky, when you go to open up to grab the seventh fret on the A string, from your pinky to your pointer gives you more space to get back and grab it. I recommend you practice both ways, you know, maybe do some back and forths. Just kind of get a feel for it. And then go to the pointer pinky option. And get a feel for it just so that all your fingers move nicely. So that is the introduction to the pentatonic. That's position one and position two and starting to delve into the patterns, what to look for, how you 
That way, whenever you start somewhere, you know, okay, well, this has to be next because we already did that, you know, on the previous strings and whatever, just like we covered with the major scale and all of its modes. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. You're going to do awesome.